What's up and welcome to Culture Makers. My name is Tanner. I'm Dom. And today we're going to talk about Justin and Selena. We're going to talk about drama. We're also going to talk about the Jonas Brothers yeah. in a new trend on TikTok. Let's get to it. Come on. So rumors, gossip, Man. drama, Dom, it's everywhere. It is. It's everywhere, but particularly on social media the last couple of weeks, it's been swirling around a couple of people mm -hmm. that you've probably heard of. Oh, for sure. So Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber and Hayley Bieber yeah. have this thing going on. Tell us what you know. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot. Yeah, I know. It's like, I know bits and pieces. I know some of it started with eyebrow laminating. Mm -hmm. I'm not Makes sure. Makes sense. I feel like this feud has been going on for like the past 12 years, yes. like half of my life. And so I'm finally starting to like, kind of like, what in the actual <laughs> heck is going on? I don't know, something about his birthday. Yep. Something about tattoos or like not getting enough photos with Haley. And I guess they're digging like on each other through social media, but like not apparent enough where it's like, I'm coming for you. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Oh, it's super subtle, but it's also very loud yeah. at the same time. And yes. these like fans for the Biebers oh, for and sure. for Selena are like going at it. And oh, it's, man. it's really actually crazy to see how upset they are yeah. over, like I watched the video and I'm like, I don't, like Dom, I didn't get it. Yeah. I didn't get yeah. it, but they got it. It's crazy that, like you said, it's been going on this long. Yeah. I remember when Selena, and Justin broke up, mm -hmm. and that was a hard time yeah. for a lot of people. Yeah, it was. Um, but Justin seems to be happily married. Mm -hmm. Selena's incredibly successful. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy that there's still like this much stuff going on yeah. between these people. It makes me think the love like couple for my, I feel like my generation, maybe a little bit older, was Will Smith and mm. Jada. Because it looked like from an outside perspective and so far away, like Will was all for Jada. Mm. Like you mm. wanted that love that right. they shared. And I think for like some of the generations, maybe even below us and maybe some of us too, is that was their like, right. oh my gosh, like that is what love looks like. Look at how they look at each other. Mm -hmm. Look at how they care for each other. Oh my gosh, Justin did this, Selena did this. And then they left and yep. they broke up. And so it's hard for them to kind of like watch like, oh, well, he's pursuing her and she's like, what's going on? And so yeah. I think it just broke some people's heart. And for stuff. sure it did. That kind of is all on social media, but mm -hmm. when you personally run into rumors, gossip, drama in your own life, how does that initially make you feel when you're like presented with somebody, even if you're not seeking it out, like it's just brought yeah. to you, like what goes through your mind? I think like the first thing I think is like, I'll, I'm easily gonna cast blame on myself of like, what did I do? Like I'm asking my questions like, what did I do? What do I need to take responsibility for? What am I taking someone else's like responsibility? Like mm. that was not my wrongdoing. Like I didn't do that, but why am I carrying it as if I did? Right. Um, and then trying to make right like what I did wrong. Like I'm all for responsibility and making sure that if I did something wrong, I'm gonna go talk to that person and be like, you know what? I really messed up and I'm so sorry for that. I hope that you can forgive me, but mm. I'm gonna allow you the space that you need to process. So even if you hate me right now, Mm -hmm. I'm gonna still like love on you and like wave at you right. from a distance because I want to respect you. Now, here's the thing. This is like 10 years of learning how to do that. But like when I was younger, I would just carry so much shit like, dang, like why did I do that? Or what did I, what do I need to do and stuff like that. And so what I've learned is like creating space mm -hmm. for them to process, for me to process because both of us are hurt and we need healing. And so when I feel I'm ready and hopefully can gauge when, I, uh, when the other person is ready to maybe forgive, I will approach them um, and say like, you know, I don't like how that ended. I would love to see if there's any restoration. Yeah, what you said there is really key is when we approached with something, someone said something about you mm -hmm. or this happened or this is how this person feels about you. The first thing that I feel is often self-defense mm -hmm. or it's like, oh, you wanna be the one who's mad at me? Mm -hmm. Like, let's talk about you. Let's yeah. have you look in the mirror <laughs> first. And the reality is, is there's nothing Christ-like about that. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing that is bringing me or that person closer to Jesus. Yeah. Um, one of the toughest things I think as a teenager that we can walk through is having to be the bigger person. <laughs> oh boy. And what that actually means, because it feels as if we gain nothing in that. Yeah. You know, it feels as if we gain nothing in forgiveness. Mm -hmm. It feels as if when we turn the other cheek, like Jesus tells us to do, well, that person's getting to walk all over us or they yeah. got to have the last say and mm -hmm. I didn't get to say my piece. And the truth is, is that, um, from experience, I can tell you that having the last word or making sure that uh, your words are the 
most hurtful, mm -hmm. it never results in anything yeah. that is worthwhile. Like yeah. never. And I know that's so difficult mm -hmm. to walk in and trust and believe, but it's so true. And I know that there's been a lot of times that I've had to go back and apologize to people <clears throat> because mm -hmm. I let my pride mm -hmm. get in the way of um, what I knew I should do. Because the reality is, is that Jesus calls us to live different mm -hmm. and set apart from the world that we're in. Yeah. And so if we're constantly surrounded about uh, around people who are just spilling tea and talking bad about mm -hmm. one another, you know what mm -hmm. my mom used to always tell me? <laughs> she used to always say, Tanner, tea stains. Hi. Come on! Mm -hmm. Now I thought about that and I was like, okay, because if we have an image that we want to uphold Dang. and to look like Jesus, we can't uphold that image mm. and have a stained image with the way that we talk about other people yeah. and the way that we gossip. Like we're either a part of that or we're not. Come on somebody. That's when we good. think about Jesus and we think about the way that he lived his life, there's a scripture <clears throat> that I love to look at. It's in Proverbs 18, 21 and it says this, it's really short and sweet. The tongue can bring death or life. Mm. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. Ooh boy. It's clear. It's real clear as we're considering all of the stuff that's going on mm. in culture, but then also <clears throat> the stuff that's happening in our life too. Mm. We have a part to play in either bringing life or death to our situations mm -hmm. with the words that we speak to it, whether that's surrounding the people with us or even maybe ourselves mm -hmm. as well. Um, and that's a place for us to start and look at. So Dom, what do you think, we've read from Proverbs, but what do you think Jesus wants us to do when it comes to being in a situation that is uncomfortable. Mm. That's kind of what we've talked about, mm. where it requires <clears throat> forgiveness. It requires us to um, potentially swallow our pride. Yeah. What would you say Jesus wants us to do? Maybe even what have you learned? Yeah. In that? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is like love. Mm. Like that's, that's his commandment is to love our neighbor. It's easy, but it's hard to like actually put action to. Right. Um, the best thing that I can think of is one, like I said, give yourself space, like feel the feelings, process what you need to process. Make sure that if you're really fueled up and angry, like do it, process with someone that you can trust. Be careful when you go to other friends too, because it doesn't want to be like a, a, you know, I'm bashing homegirl right. or homeboy, right. but it's like, hey, I just need, like I need wise counsel. Yeah. And the Bible calls us to do that, to seek wise counsel so that you can help process those thoughts because sometimes it's just hard and hard yeah. to wrap your mind around. But once you get to the point where it's like, okay, this is what I did wrong. I need to own up to it. And you know, I want to process this with the other person to make sure that we can squash it correctly. Mm -hmm. Then we can only control our reaction. Right. So we're going to bring that to that, to that partner. But yeah. if they want to be angry again, okay, let them be angry and like they can do their thing, but we can control what we can do and that's to love them from afar if needed. Right. But it'd be awesome <clears throat> and best case scenario if we can love them like together yeah. and stuff. So I would just say love your love your friend as much as you can yeah. um, in that season. I, I love that. While you were saying that, I thought of a quote that I think really applies to this. So obedience is our responsibility, outcome is God's. Mm -hmm. And so when we step into that space, of following through with exactly what Dom just said and was super wise to listen to what she said, to seek wise counsel mm -hmm. and then to internally wrestle with, okay, what do I need to address? Some of you, you might need to write down your emotions so mm -hmm. that when you're talking to the person, yeah. you're not exploding. <clears throat> Maybe you feel like a hot mess and you're going to cry and that's okay. But to step into those with, Hey, I value this relationship and I value you but we also have to work through some stuff just because those moments are uncomfortable. That's actually choosing love because love is choosing, yes, grace, but it's also choosing truth. And you get to step into that knowing that you have the Holy Spirit working in you and through you as you seek wise counsel mm -hmm. to step into those yeah. um, uncomfortable conversations. And it's always worthwhile doing. And I would always say that <clears throat> you grow closer with people when you take that approach rather than just put your hand up I'm done with them. Mm -hmm. They're canceled. Yeah. We're moving on. Yeah. And so it's a lonely road mm -hmm. if that's what you kind of find yourself doing over and mm -hmm. over again. So we'd say that's something for you to step into. Yeah. Moving forward, Dom, we're going to talk about your favorite band growing up of My all time. My favorite band. Okay. Yeah. I know you. I know you. Mm -hmm. So boys to men. No. <laughs> no. God. Was that really your favorite band? Yes. 
Yes. Are you kidding yes. me? Yes. Uh, oh. I love R&B. Really? Yes, really? I do. Okay, well, <laughs> Jonas Brothers. Joe so Gross. maybe maybe okay. we missed them, yes, but like, they no. probably copied Boys to Men to Maybe a just a little bit. Maybe some uh, of the runs. They have a brand new album coming out. I'm so excited. So it's so funny. We've talked about Justin Bieber already in this video. So growing up for me, like... Disney Channel was Jonas Brothers and Justin Bieber. Mm -hmm. And they were like iconic. Yeah. And now they're kind of like coming back around. Justin Bieber never really left the stage. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> Jonas Brothers are coming back with an album called Wings. Yep. I guess they're gonna teach us how to fly. Um, maybe <laughs> it is. Maybe dead. it is. A, maybe we be on the lookout for that oh, album. I'm They've come out with a couple of really great singles, so yes, I'm excited to see a complete album. Yeah. Um, so that's coming up. There's also this new social trend. So let's talk about this. Okay. So we kind of looked at some pictures mm -hmm. and looked through some. All right. How does this work? Yeah. So. It is called the teenage look. Okay. Dom, tell us about yeah. the teenage look. What's happening on the teenage look on TikTok? So what what I'm understanding is you get two pictures, how you originally look on the bottom, mm -hmm. and then on the top, it's a young it looks like a younger version of you. And what I'm finding is people are looking at it and just like kind of apologizing to to the younger version of how they treated themselves back in the day of mm -hmm. like carrying that shame that they shouldn't have been carrying. It should have been gods if we want to go down that road. But right. um, just apologizing and just being like, oh my gosh, I wish I could be with you right now and mm -hmm. just hold you from all the things that they've had to walk through. Yeah, I think for some people, it's like therapeutic yeah. to go back and do that. For others, it's um, kind of a mourning type mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. And that set aside, it's mm -hmm. also really funny to see like just people like Oh, 100%, it's and, crazy. You know, um, so it's, trend that's going on right now. You've probably seen it. I will de-age myself and I will look like I'm four. They'll probably so, take away your like, whole beard um, and the everything. Whole, yeah. The whole beard, just baby four face all over oh again, all over again. So <laughs> let's wrap up where we've been. So we've talked about drama, we've talked about mm. gossip, and we've talked about what does it look like to handle that. Dom, if someone's watching this video yeah. and they recognize that maybe they're a part of drama, and they're feeling some conviction mm -hmm. about that or want to know what steps to take next. I know that you've already said to go and seek wise counsel. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else if they're watching this video and they're recognizing there's some situations that I need to go make right? Is there anything else you would tell them to do? Man, okay, so definitely seek wise counsel because they'll help you process. Have a conversation. Like, if you just keep these emotions and thoughts to yourself, nothing will be resolved, and then you'll just end up with broken bridges mm -hmm. throughout the rest of your life. And so, again, you can only control your response and right. not their reaction. And so, try your best to resolve. And if it means loving each other, like, hand in hand, mm -hmm. that's great. That's best case scenario. But if that also means loving them from afar, then that's okay, too. But we have to be okay with loving them, loving them from afar and not, okay, I forgive you. Oh my God, I did it up. Yeah, like, you know yeah. what I mean? We can't go back and, and revert to exactly what we were trying to resolve. Mm -hmm. And so I also think too, if I can say quickly, if uh, you are bringing in the gossip, like you're the one that's like, I've got the tea, I'm ready to stain. Okay, you're not just staining yourself, but you're staining others too. Mm -hmm. So you gotta take that uh, accountability. And you, I would encourage you to take steps to take yourself from that position. So create accountability, get in the right friend group so that you no longer have those conversations. Find friends that are positive, mm -hmm. that uplift others and not those that are ready to spill the tea with right. you. So so that you can find yourself out of that title. Yeah. So yeah. I can't say it any better than <laughs> that. Yeah. We've loved uh, spending some time with you on the Culture Make Us. Join us next time. Peace. See y'all.